Salut tout le monde, Christine L here, and we've got class tube number eight, numéro huit, ça va vite. Um, it is today pre-October the 27th, I want to say, and I will catch my breath. I've actually just been running around trying to set things up for this class tube, so I'm kind of like <laughs> at the moment, but that will pass. Um, it's also... Well, it's not super early in the morning. It's early in the morning for me. Um, I sleep in a lot on weekends. Um, especially now with work being as exhausting as it is. Um, had to do more overtime this weekend. Mm, I'm not happy about that. We are unfortunately in this kind of weird place of like feeling like hamsters in a wheel because the system we work on right now can't handle the huge influx of people using the system. Um, so the more people that are on it, the slower it gets, the longer it takes us to do our tasks every day. So until that gets fixed, until we can get like a good solid software that's running smoothly all day, every day, I feel like we're constantly going to be playing catch up. We get ourselves caught up with the overtime over the weekend, and then during the week, we just slowly, slowly, slowly builds and builds and builds and builds because we've got delays with, um, you know, server issues and software and things working but not working and this and that. So, unfortunately, that's life for me right now. Um, hopefully, I mean, there should be a light at the tunnel. I mean, they can't keep doing this forever. Clients are going to start getting more and more upset. Um, and they are upset and as employees we can't keep paying the price every weekend that's where burnout comes in right you start asking too much of people um, especially when you're already working 40 hours a week anything extra you do is already overtime and it goes into time and a half and that costs the company money so I've never understood that it's actually in the best interest for a company to only do 37 and a half hours a week one your employees are far more productive um, let's be real, um, it's been proven that four-day work weeks um, create as much productivity as a five-day work week. We're human beings. If we know that we can accomplish things in a small amount of time and then be free and be done with it, we'll do it. We'll manage it, right? Um, so I think that's kind of like, if you have people at 37 and a half hours, you've got that two and a half hour window where people don't go into over time, time and a half, and it remains not necessarily budget neutral, but it doesn't have such a huge impact on corporate budget, right? But whatever, I'm already doing 40 hours a week, anything extra is time and a half, but I'm not young anymore. I don't enjoy this. Work is not my life. I want my weekends. I want my crafting time. I want a good balance in life. So I'm not jumping at the money. And if we're being totally honest, after taxes, I don't know that it's really worth it. And the more you earn, the higher the tax bracket you get, the more they take out. So, I don't know if that paycheck is going to be even worth looking at with all that extra time in it. Um, but it is what it is. So, right now I'm hanging on. I'm hanging on because I feel like some day when we get to steady state, when we get to business as usual, when we get to a simple maintenance phase as opposed to a crisis phase, I see the potential. I see the potential of this company. I see the potential of the people in it. And I see the potential for the work to be done and to be done really, really well with good quality, which for me is, that's at the top. That's what I'm aiming for every day, right? So yeah, so, um, that's exhausting. It has a moral toll, a morale toll as well, because you don't get to disconnect. There's always work. Even when I slept in yesterday, um, I woke up knowing, okay, well, I've got to put some time in today. It's not too, too much. I'm not doing a full work day. But the idea is you go from relaxing mode to work mode to relaxing mode to work mode. To... There's no time where you are in relaxed mode for an extended period of time. And again, I say that's what creates burnout and stress. Um, the weather's actually nice today, so if you're hearing screaming, that would be the hooligans two doors down. They don't seem to know 
that they live in a close community where we are literally all stuck together. So I get to hear that a lot. Don't like it. Don't like it at all. Um, but it is what it is. So. so yeah, so that's been mostly my week. Today I actually have the pleasure of hanging out with a friend. We are going to go, um, slap some masks on and go makeup shopping and uh, go to Lush too and get some bath bombs, which I love. Um, every time I get a bath bomb from somewhere else, I'm reminded of why I love Lush so much. Their stuff, it smells so good. And if you've ever used Lush products, even whether it's their bath bombs or their soaps or whatever, uh, your bathroom smells delicious, like for the rest of the day. And I love that, I love that. Um, the sparkly and stuff is, is great too, but a Lush bath bomb, it has a smell and there's oil in there that are perfect. You actually feel like you had a nice spa bath. In comparison to some of the less expensive stuff, or it's not even that less expensive because I will say this, Lush, for the size of the bath bombs that you get, the price is really good. And I've seen elsewhere, elsewhere like Bath and Body Works and stuff where they charge like an arm and a leg for this tiny little bath bomb. So Lush's prices are really good. It's all natural. It's fantastic. Um, but yeah, the... The glitter, the quality of what's in there, you can tell. I love it. So we're gonna do that today. It'll be a good, I think that'll be good for me. I think I really need it. With this whole pandemic thing is I'm barely leaving the house anymore because I'm working from home. Um, I did my groceries yesterday and like every time someone came too close, I just wanted to be like, back off. I didn't, of course. I was just like, and mm, went about my business. Um, in this day and age, or this, this time, I think people are looking for fights, so I think you have to be very careful. Um, I also think people are on hair triggers right now. I've seen it. I feel it too. Me too. Sometimes I think I've overreacted or snapped at things that really didn't need to. Um, it's kind of the nature of living under this constant cloud of stress and anxiety and worry and fear. Um, that stuff's going to happen. So I think it's important to just sort of be aware of it and... Um, control myself in the meantime but going out right now I gotta say it doesn't help that I have depression and anxiety like depression generalized anxiety because all that external stimulation or all that external influence really affects your head and your brain as well and I find that the more I stay inside the more fearful and anxiety ridden I become about the external world or the outside world. So you have to be really careful about that. You have to be really careful. So um, today I'm going to do some shopping with a friend. Next week um, I have another friend coming from Ottawa. Um, I think we're going to do some, we were, we were originally going to do some resin, but I think we're looking at perler beads right now. So it'll be easy, not messy, um, and we'll have a great finish immediately as opposed to resin, which takes like 24 hours to cure. So if we worked on that, she wouldn't be able to bring it home with her after. Whereas with the perler beads, worst case, we iron it, it's, it's sealed and done, and then she takes off with it. So I will get my social time in, which I think right now is much needed. I need some chit chat. I need some worry-free talking. Let's let's talk about other things. Um, let's see how other people, let's, let's touch base, let's connect, right? So much, much needed. Yeah. So yeah, so again with the overtime and the exhaustion, I'm kind of sort of just crafting here and there. Primarily what I've been watching this week is YouTube. Um, I was not in the mood for anything. The problem when you're already anxiety ridden is that external stimuli can increase that anxiety. So if I watch something that's like high tension, I, I get highly tense. If I see something that's romantic, then I go, well, I'm all alone. It, whenever the movie has a tendency to influence my feelings right I, I always say especially um with movies and I go like is it really sad and people are like oh yeah like they know me they know and I'm an empath they know I'm gonna cry and they're like you're gonna cry a lot and then I go okay well I'm not emotionally prepared to watch that movie right now and I put it to the side I actually have to be ready or be okay or be strong enough to watch it so it's strange but you learn to like work with how you are and how your feelings are and you learn what your triggers are and so you learn to avoid them. If I don't want to be sad, I'm not going to watch a really sad movie no matter how good it is. I don't want it to um, influence how I'm going to feel for the rest of the day. So I tend to have to like be in a mindset for stuff. So the last couple of weeks with a lot of stuff being on work and my brain being like 
24 seven exhausted because it's go, go, go at work. You got to take care of this. You got to take care of that. Has this been done? Is this done yet? Did this timeline, that timeline, this is unacceptable. This, uh, it gets crazy, right? So your brain is constantly rolling, constantly ruminating over stuff. So TV will add to that as right. Cause you're just, you're taking that in, you're interpreting, you're feeling for the characters you do and your whole thing. Um, so yeah, so what I've been doing is just YouTube. I've been watching other people's floss tubes. Um, I just started watching um, Off the Grid Needle Arts. Uh, um, very, very popular. She makes ever tote bags. Um, it's a cross stitch and knitting project bags as well. Um, and she has her own floss tube and daily chats and things. So, you know, I've been watching some of those, catching up. It, it feels nice because it's just, it's crafty chat and I don't necessarily get that right now. You know? Um, used to go to crops if you're a scrapbooker or a card maker you know um, a crop is essentially where you know someone would run an event all of us would pay and we'd go there and we all hang out in this big room sometimes it's a conference hall sometimes it's the back of a store whatever it is and we'd all sit and hang out for a day two days three days depending if it was a weekend event um, and then you're just for 12 hours a day for three days it's crafty chat crafty chat as well as chit chat and girl time right or that you know the that connection time really um and i haven't gotten that since probably i think it's january or whatever and i really really miss it really miss it so i like the floss tube kind of makes me feel like that i don't get to say anything to them all truth truth be told i mean i yell at the tv or i talk to the tv i go yes girl yes while they're talking <laughs> um or I'll answer their questions. I'll be like, oh, that's because you didn't, da, 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 or, oh, I love that one. She can't hear me. She can't do anything. She's not feeling it. She ain't hearing it. Um, but for me, it's that aspect of like, it's not just me. I'm connecting with other people and we are talking about fun, crafty stuff. So that's primarily what I've been sort of binging or watching lately. And it's, it's been nice. Uh, um, like I said, it's low key, low stress. It doesn't create any additional anxiety. Um, and as well, a lot of the people that I follow are, you know, they're feminists. And so they will talk about important political issues. And I'm like, yes, preach. Or I'm listening and going, oh, thank God. Okay, this is a good person to follow. Um, you know, they're they're feminists. So they're about equality. They're about diversity. They, you know, like... No turfs allowed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that in and of itself makes me go, okay, like there's still hope for the world. There are good people out there, and I am getting to connect with them and see them and share with them. So I'm like, that's good. Phew. Some hope restored. <laughs> so yeah, essentially any and all crafting time that I had, um, this week was in really short stints. Um, there wasn't much opportunity to sit and stitch for long hours. Um, not even yesterday, Saturday, because of work again. So it is what it is. But let's get into that first whip. I did make a teeny bit of progress on everything. So there's that. We've got some movement on all projects. So the first one we're going to start with, and I'm going to go low key, low tech again. Um, it takes so much time to not just insert those images and do all that editing, um, but just processing time. So like saving the video after, um, and because floss tube is so large, um, it's, it's sorry. I just got totally distracted because my cat walked in the room and she never, ever hangs out when I'm talking. So she must be feeling lonely today or maybe it's cause it's early in the morning. So she's used to either, I'm sitting in the living room at this point, or I'm sitting in the dining room working. But, uh, so it's very strange to see her in here. Hi, baby. What's up? Yeah. You come explore with mom. You never come in when I'm in here. I know I'm in your spot. Normally you're here. Sucks you can't see her because it looks like I'm just talking to myself right now, but... <laughs> And honestly, if I move to like, they move the camera or anything, she'll bolt out of here. She'll run. So let's get to the first cross stitch. Like I said, um, only a tiny bit of progress on everything and I'm going low tech. It's just too long to digitally edit everything and wait for all that to process and then wait for all that to upload. 
Um, last Sunday, it literally took all day, and then the video ended up being released so late at night. Which sucks. Hi, you want to come up? Come on. Come on. You want to come say hi? <laughs> Just stare at me. You want to come up? Come on. Come on, Mary. She's looking. She's analyzing. Is it worth coming out? Your window's open. Yeah. Your window's open. Go sit in the window. She's such a scaredy cat, no matter how much you encourage her. Essentially what I do with her is I encourage her and then I ignore her. That way she gets the idea that it's okay and she can take her time and do it without me watching or feeling like she's being focused on. That's one of her things is to feel like she's being focused on is like, danger's coming. And now she's a cough. Okay. So the first whip we've got, of course, is Through the Stars. And because I'm doing this old school, we're doing this low tech. This is a reminder of what it will look like. I think my biggest concern about doing it the low tech version is because I have such a shake in my hands. Um, that is not on purpose. Maybe if I brace myself. But uh, anyways. It is what it is. So this is what Through the Stars is going to look like. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to getting to the characters over here, mostly because I think each of those, when I'm done, will feel like a small finish. So ideally, I'd like to just complete one and then move on to the next one, carrying or just parking all the threads. So I feel like each and every one of those will feel like a finish. Um, but for the time being, it's kind of feel like it's dragging on. But this is what it's going to look like. And I actually have it off the Q-snap this time. I packaged it away because it I knew I wasn't going to touch it for a couple of days. So, let's take a look-see. Sorry, I'm just going to make sure I have it the right way. Oof, the light is going to wreak some havoc on us. So let's square her up. There we go. So there we go. So we've got that first outer ring. We had finished the last symbol that was down here somewhere. No, this one. It was this one here. Um, so we finished that symbol, and I've got the, the outer gold ring. These are a bit bigger, so naturally they're going to take a little longer, each one of them, to do. Um, and then in these will be the constellations. So that, I have a feeling, will seem a little less fun, um, because for the most part it'll be a single stitch here and there, and then the constellation will be put together with um, backstitching. Um, but it's moving along. Like I said, I'm, I'm not a fan of using this silk thread. It really, really tangles. Um, but we're making the progress. We're making some movement. I'm happy if there's a little bit of movement every week. That's fine. Um, it's just that the only thing I don't want to get to is to a point where like all my whips are parked and haven't been touched in months at a time. So my goal is if I'm going to start a whip, I want to be able to work on it a little bit every week. The goal, reality, expectations versus reality, who knows. So that's it. So definitely, so again, that pattern is from Clouds Factory and the um, fabric is from Easy Stitch for Fun on Etsy. I never remember to do that stuff, but I try to remember to link it down below. Um, so if ever there's something you're like, where did you get that? Just ask. Plop it in the comments. I'll be happy to respond. Um, um, there's no comments most days, so I'll be happy to respond. That's the beauty of being a small YouTuber, is that you still have the time and the leeway and the bandwidth to be able to communicate with everyone. Um, the next stitch, Dark Queen of the Seas. Of course, I'm smiling because this was like the big thing, and I've been waiting so long to, to work on her. So... This is what's been released. You can see a bit of the shadow in the back. Again, this is um, a mystery stitch along. We do not know what the full final image will look like, but for the time being, we have these three little fishies. So the shading in the back tells you approximately what it's gonna look like, but as you can see, the three fish is what was released for September. October is right around the corner and I am not caught up, but my plan last week or my goal last week was to have one fish fully stitched and I'm pretty much there. 
I say pretty much there because there's the eye and a couple of the the yellow a bit of the yellow stitching up there that I didn't do um, just because thread ran out and I moved on um, and then we've got the partial tail of the other one coming together you can see that so basically what I did is I did the first stitch and then when that thread was left over I parked it and then that's why I started over here because I started with whatever the ends or whatever left over from there and I just carried to the to the next fish over so yeah making really good progress on that but not enough that I'm going to be able to finish before um, October before the second part drops so October I'm gonna have some catch-up to do um, but like I said I really just wanted one fish done at least for this week and to say I've been able to do that I'm quite happy it is not a difficult stitch it's just straight cross stitching but there are a lot of colors I am astounded at the amount of detail you won't be able to see all the nuances but that fishtail has like four or five colors in it it's amazing so you can even see I mean you can see the beauty of it that's amazing so I have a feeling this is going to be quite the epic stitch when it's done um the charting so far and I've just seen three fish I am astounded at the detail um, and the beautiful blend of these colors. So this is motivating to work on um, when you start seeing that come together. So yeah, so that's been a lot of fun. Um, again, I plans on this for this week. Um, I'd like to finish the second fish. Maybe I could do that this week. Barring massive overtime and exhaustion. Uh, but ideally I'd like to finish this. I mean, Again, October's dropping next week, and I'm already going to be behind, but if I can get another fish, it's fine. It means I'll do a little bit of work on this every week and hopefully catch up for um, the end of October. Whatever. It's fine. I feel like I'm zipping through these today, but I think it's because um, I haven't done much progress and because I'm aware that there's other stuff I got to do today, but... It's cool, it's cool. Um, I have a third whip. And I blame Michelle G. Bendy Stitchy. And I, when I say blame, I mean thank you. I actually adore this pattern. I've been, she's had it out for a while. She actually had the physical copy out to retailers um, and local needle shops. But I really wanted the PDF. And I'm, I gotta say, I'm glad I waited for the PDF because uh, Bendy Stitchy's patterns work beautifully in Pattern Keeper. It was so easy. It loaded quickly. Everything was there. It picked up all of the colors. No problem. There's only two colors. Um, but anyways, her, her PDF worked beautifully, so I'm glad I, I waited for that. So what is it to say? It is the Drama Llama Sampler. I'm super thrilled about this. So like I said, I wanted more feminism in my cross stitch. So the quote we've got on here is, no time for drama. This patriarchy won't dismantle itself. And then she's got, um, of course, the llamas. She's got beautiful lettering. She's got an alphabet. She's got a second alphabet with numerals down here. And this gorgeous framework, which is super fun. So again, a sampler to me, anyways, I don't know what the original purpose or definition of a sampler was. But to me, it's basically something that you're practicing stitches on. So rather than being one full cohesive image, let's say like um, Dark Queen of the Seas, where at the end you've got a full image, to me, samplers are about alphabets. They're about practicing your stitches. They're about doing small motifs that kind of maybe work together. So this is what this case, she's designed beautiful alphabet, um, the super fun sentiment, of course, I love it, um, and the llamas. So she's designed this in two different colors, which is great for the llamas because it really delineates the, the wrap and their leash and stuff, or the harness, <laughs> the leash. It's not a dog, Christine. Um, but I, I've changed it up a bit. Now, I'm not 100% sold on whether I'm going to do the whole thing in one color, uh, one skein or one DMC. Um, I'm still debating that because I have another color that could maybe, but I think it might contrast too much. It's a metallic color and I think it'll be too much for this. So this is the pattern and I haven't gotten much. It was just a late night start, literally, um, before bed yesterday. But I've just got some standard 14 count black Ada. It was really all I could find and truth be told I'm kind of glad I chose black or just went ahead and did it rather than waiting for material or fabric 
because the black is so, so dark, whereas any fabric I had would have probably come out, um, you know, a light black or a muted black. This is just straight up dark black. And so what happens is that beautiful rainbow stitching, her rainbow floss really shows up. So yeah, so it's just, uh, where did I put it? Well, now it's all scattered everywhere, but it's basically just 7501, I believe it is. So it's just that light pastel sort of rainbow color. Um, I don't think the camera is doing it justice, but it really pops on that black. So I just started in a corner rather than the middle. I'm hoping it fits. I believe it should. Um, fingers crossed because I've already started. Um, but yeah, so the fun part about this is I'm actually working it a little bit differently. Normally what I do is I do half stitches all the way across and then I come back. But um, because of the yarn, I wanted each X or each stitch to remain the same color. I didn't want, let's say, like half of it to be yellow and then by that time I come back it's blue on top or it's green on top. Um, that's fine. That's one way to do variegation. Um, I remember asking um, Michelle G in one of her lives and that's what she was saying and everybody else in the chat was saying that too. It depends on the effect that you're going for. If you want a true variegated, then great going um, half a stitch in one color and then coming back with another is going to create a really interesting blend. In this case though, I wanted each stitch to be that specific color. So I'm working each X as I go along. And as you can see, I'm also following, you might not be able to see it, but I am literally following the pattern. So right here, I didn't work all of this together. I actually followed the design, went in the, uh, the square, came back, came back out and came around, right? So I'm literally working the line as it appears. That's actually a pretty good view. So yeah, so I've just, just, just started, obviously. But I adore, and of course, because it's just a single color, it's easy. This was just like one strand. I just worked it until I, I had finished that, that strand, those two strands. Um, it's easy. It's just stitches. I'm doing each little X at a time. Um, so I feel like this will be really, really good when I want to um, stitch, but I know I'm too tired to be watching out for color changes or complex uh, counting. So this to me is going to be a nice relaxing stitch and I really, really like that. I love the way this is popping on the black. So yes, thank you, thank you, thank you to this, to, for this design. Michelle, this is amazing. I've been waiting forever. Um, again, I'm not sure I'm going to do it in two colors. For now, I'll probably end up doing one color and then seeing how, maybe I'll do a couple stitches with the other color and see how it, how it works. But I think it's too metallic for this, uh, but either way, I'm stoked. I'm loving it. Um, that's going to be a nice, nice, um, calming stitch, relaxed stitch. So essentially that's it for cross stitch today. I didn't purchase anything new. Um, no new patterns. I picked up a few, couple of free patterns. Might talk about that next week because they are, they are free. They're available all the time. Um, and I'm not sure I'm going to start on any of those right away. So I'll definitely discuss that, um, but for now that's it on the cross stitch. So my plan cross stitch plans for the week, um, obviously I'd like to get another fish done on Dark Queen of the Seas and I would like to do two more circles. That's the goal. Two circles on the, um, through the stars Zodiac sampler. Let's say that's what I'm putting out for myself this week. How, how, how well I'll achieve that? We'll find out next week. So, last week I teased a bit about, cro uh, not cross stitch, crochet. Because that is something else I do, but I don't, didn't currently have a project on the, uh, on my hook. So, I teased a little something that I wanted to share with you, but as it happens, in that time, I started a project. So I've got another whip. This time we've got an actual crochet whip. So we've got a work in progress. Um, before I show you how far along I am on that, not very far, um, I did want to show you the pattern. So let me take a moment to say um, that I adore Connie Lee. So I've actually been 
Connie and I have been mutual follows for years. I think even before her son was, yeah, definitely before her son was born. Um, we've been mutual follows, always supporting each other. She's one of those people that is, I truly believe is beautiful inside and out. Um, I've always had great conversations with her and, um, anyways, she's just one of the people we're mutual follows. We've been for years. Um, I, I support her wherever I can, uh, when I can. Um, and so Connie Lee or crochet, etc. cetera, um, is a cross stitch crochet pattern maker. I have done one of our patterns in the past, and I think in honor of the fact that I'm doing this now, I will actually share that next week. Um, I wanted to share it today, but since I already teased you on the other piece, we'll go that first. And since this is a whip and I'm going to be talking about it next week too, um, what I'll do next week is share the other project, the other pattern um, that I made, uh, that Connie designed, and um, you'll see. She's amazing. So yeah, so the pattern I picked up today... Now, it's a little hard to tell on this, but this is basically the near shore shawl. Is it, does she call it a shawl? Oof, I'm going to have to look it up. Anyway, it's the near shore pattern. Um, oh, perfect. You can see it in the image. Pardon my shaky shaky. It is what it is. Um... But yeah, so you can see, it's basically a triangular shawl and you're actually, if I remember correctly, like you're working it sideways, you're working at it from, from one of the points. Um, and it's basically two sets of repeating rows. So I'm working the first set right now, which is, um, I believe this right here. So it's creating, with the double crochets, you're creating a bit of a... Um, a blocked lace look little squares of lace and then there's a second repeating in pattern here that I haven't gotten to yet so absolutely adorable um, I was able to use yarn that I had that I had actually picked up at uh, Boutique Crochet Co, uh, Crochet and Co, excuse me um, and I had earmarked for something else if you'll go back to an old floss tube of mine um, but I decided to use it for this instead because I, there was something about this pattern that as soon as it popped up and I, I saw Connie's photos on her Instagram and I was like, I really want to, I really want to stitch this. I really, really want to crochet this. So I downloaded the, the pattern from Ravelry. I'll have everything linked down below. And if you can support Connie, her patterns are amazing. They're easy. They're well written. She writes them beautifully. She always includes figures and diagrams as well to help with your stitching. Um, she does have a gauge. She helps, um, she shows you at one point, if you're at a certain point, a certain number of rows, you should be approximately X inches long. Sloppy crafter is a happy crafter. I don't gauge. That's why I don't do clothing probably because I know I wouldn't gauge and it would come out all wrong, but I don't do gauge. To me, it's a shawl. It's not imperative. I don't need it to fit. Um, I have a feeling it will come out um, a little oversized, a bit bigger than her original pattern because of the way I'm stitching. However, I don't care. It's a shawl. You want it to be cozy, comfy. For me, I don't mind if that's a bit bigger. I'm also a bigger person. We got more shoulder width. We got more to wrap around, right? <laughs> um, but that's it. So let's let's take a look. Let's let's see. Enough chit chat. So it looks like I'm gonna have to put a bit of a marker to figure out where I'm at or um, basically progress since we last talked. Uh, but this is it, so this is my start. Uh, so we're actually just doing these rows of double um, crochets and some chain spaces and whatnot. Ugh, I just saw a mistake. How weird is that? I'm trying to show it off and I'm like, boom! I zeroed in on that mistake right away. Um, Oh well, it's way too far down. I'm not undoing it. But that's it. So that's where we are so far. Um, this is a, I believe it's the colorway charcoal. It's a Pepino yarn from Richard DeVries. I will, or DeVries, DeVries? I will link it down below. Um, it's, it's a bit, it's not, it's a bit stiff. But I have a feeling for the sake of this, it might actually work really well. It's got a good enough weight that I think it will sit nicely. But that's it. I'm excited because it's like the first thing I've had on my hooks in a long, long time. And it was like riding a bicycle, like the, the stitching came back. Like the... 
picture of these. Yeah, it was like riding a bicycle. Like the motion, the physical memory came back really quickly and I was like, boop, 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 boop. And this came out in no time. So, um, this is crochet for me is also something that I can do very easily without thinking. The, uh, the pattern was easy to remember. It's just two different rows and I'm going back and forth, back and forth. I love that. That's the beauty of crochet for me is that I, I always have a really easy time remembering and then I can just, um, you know, crochet without looking at the pattern repeatedly. So this is going to go on for several rows and then I will learn what the next um, section of the pattern is and then it repeats those two chunks, uh, which I love. So thank you, thank you, Connie, for designing the near shore. It's really, really pretty and I cannot wait to see how it comes out. Um, she used a beautiful bluish gray variegated yarn, um, but I already had this and honestly, I, I love the deep charcoal color. It's a neutral. It will go with everything and that's kind of the plan. I'm very, I'm big on scarves in the winter. I love that. I'm wearing them all the time. So I might as well expand a little bit and make shawls as well. Um, plain top, beautiful colored shawl on top. I'm going to try to make that my uh, winter look this year. So yeah, so we've got a crochet. So yeah, so I do not have specific plans for this. This for me will probably be just something as I, I pick up and I go, you know what, I want to work on something, but I don't want to think too much. This is perfect. Uh, um, and it's it's going to go quickly. I, I crochet for me is nothing. I, I move really, really quick. I stitch really, really quickly. So that's it. So I don't, like I said, no plans for that. I will work on that as I work on it. Um, but I did want to share that and everything I've talked about today will be linked down below if you want to check it out. Um, what's our time frame? We're at 40 minutes. Yeah, it'll be even less than that by the time I edit all this chunk out to you and um, edit this chunk. Edit some chunks out. That's it. But yeah, so that's it for today. A little bit of progress on everything, which I'm... I'm pleased with. I wanted further progress on some stuff. I would have liked to have worked more on Through the Stars, but there's no rush. There's no rush. Whereas with the Stitch Along, there's the new pattern coming out every month, and I'd like to be able to keep up because of the, um, you know, the Facebook group and seeing all that. I just want to keep in time with everybody else. But that's it. That's all. Um, I've made some notes. There are some stuff I want to talk about. I won't always just be simple and clear like this. Um, if you remember in one of the beginning floss tubes I had talked about, I do two different... Do I have them both here? Yes. So I do two different kitting up methods. So um, at some point in time, I would like to talk about what I liked and didn't like and what I'm preferring because I already have a very clear preference. So We'll talk about that at some point in time and um oh I was supposed to share the, the the thing I sneak peeked last week I almost forgot so yeah so last week I sneaky peeked a little something um I don't know if you'd have been able to tell just by the colors what it was oh my god and it's so soft um but yeah so I did this a few years back and I'd completely forgotten about it until I went through my closet and found it again so a few years back, and of course I will attempt to find the pattern and link it down below. But it is basically a shawl. Yeah, you can see it. With the Wonder Woman. The Wonder Woman emblem or, or symbol. So that's it. Like I said, it's absolutely beautiful. I really, really enjoyed working on this. And I remember it being a very... Um, it's not complex, but it was really well written and really well done. And it worked up so quick and easy. And, you know, I found colors that were absolutely perfect for it. It's beautifully soft and squishy, which I adore. Um, I don't think I remember what the yarn is. I will look it up, and if I can remember, I'll, I'll, I'll link it all down below. But the yarn for this is perfect. It's got a beautiful drape and beautiful movement, and it's very, very light. But yeah, so I wanted to share that with you guys, that, you know, your fandom, the beauty of cross-stitching, um, crocheting, knitting, is that there are a lot of fandom people out there who so you can celebrate the things you love as well as doing a DIY and crafting for yourself. So I just wanted to share that. Like I said, I am a huge scarf person, shawl person. Um, I love this during winter. I love being cozy. 
um, and in the fall as well. So, hmm, what's the weather like today? Am I going to need this? <laughs> I might just leave it on. So that's it. Yeah, so that's what I kind of wanted to tease you out. I almost forgot, but I'm glad I looked over and, and, and saw it. But yeah, so there are a few things I have ideas of what I want to talk about. Um, I don't think I'll be starting any new whips, but who knows? So yeah, so that's it. Uh, those are my plans for the week. Get a little bit of everything, basically. And at the same time, take a moment to be proud and appreciate the work you've done in the past. Um, and realize that you are better at what you do than you think. Don't be so hard on yourself. So today, that's what I'm going to ask you to do this week. Revisit an old project. Go back to something you made like 10 years ago and absolutely loved it or absolutely wasn't sure about it at that time. And then go back and revisit it and show yourself how amazing you were, how skilled you are. Um, yeah, just remind yourself of why you do this. It's fun. The things you make at the end are awesome. Um, and it's supposed to be enjoyable. So that's it for this week. A little bit of faster, faster pace. We ran through that really quickly, but, uh, I got shit to do. <laughs> so, um, that's it. Have a great week. Take care of yourself. Thanks for watching. À la prochaine.